Good morning guys, this is John AE5X and yesterday on my blog I reported having a problem with an antenna that I intend to use bicycle portable. It's a 17 foot telescoping mast from MFJ and 17 feet is just about a quarter wavelength on 20 meters and I wanted to use this on 20 and 17 meters um, from various parks in the area but when I extended it, mounted to the bicycle and put two quarter wave radials out as is the case right now. The minimum SWR was about 2.2 to 1, no matter how I adjusted the length of the antenna on either 20 or 17 meters, I couldn't get the SWR below 2.2 to 1. So I'm not willing to use it with uh, with my QRP transceiver with that much of, a, of an SWR. I prefer it to be below 1.5 to 1 and even lower if possible. So I posted that information to my blog and received a very helpful comment um, regarding matching networks, uh, specifically stub matching networks. And as I went down that path on the internet, I took a tangent off to uh, other areas regarding Smith charts and LC matching networks. And that's kind of where I'm at today and what I've decided to do to match this antenna to a 50 ohm transceiver. So I'm going to walk through exactly what the process of doing that has been for me. And uh, it's uh, pretty interesting to me, and hopefully you'll find some application in it as well. And along the way, I learned quite a bit about Smith charts and um, how to utilize both the Nano VNA and the FAVA5, you can see in the, in the picture here, to, uh, to arrive at a solution that will match this antenna to a 50 ohm impedance. So that's what I want to go through now. Okay, I've currently got the uh, Nano VNA hooked up to the antenna and to the laptop, and Nano VNA Saver is open on the laptop, and at 14.026 megahertz, I have a resistance value of 18.9 and a reactance of minus J3.6 for a total impedance of about just under 20 ohms. Okay, now with the Nano VNA and the sweep for the 17 meter band, I'm getting uh, at 18.076 megahertz, I'm getting a complex impedance value of 19.4 plus J25. And that corresponds to an SWR of 3.3. Okay guys, I'm back in the shack and I've got the values the complex impedance values of how the antenna appears on both 17 and 20 meters and I'm ready to plug those into a Smith chart and let it tell me what I need to do as far as design a matching network and I want to give thanks to W2AEW Allen for making video number 278 which really opened my eyes to, uh, to how to do all this it greatly simplified it saved me a lot of time reading which I'd already done and had still not arrived at what he describes and, and teaches you in, in seven minutes. It's a really good video. He's made a lot of great videos on his website and I highly recommend looking at some of them that interest you and if you've got one of the new Nano VNAs and you don't really know how to use a Smith chart or what they're for, check out number 278 and I think 274 also he talks about Smith charts but uh, this is a great video. So thank you Alan for, for that. And I've grabbed a screenshot of this video, and this is the screenshot. And these drawings right here show which configuration of L and C components will match a given plot of complex impedance. So if I plot right here with one of my antennas in this white area, this circuit or this circuit will allow me to impedance match <clears throat> the antenna. If I plot down here somewhere, then I can use this circuit or maybe this one if I'm over here, not down into this area. But I can use a combination of circuits. I don't know why I would choose this one over that one or vice versa if I want to match an antenna that plots here. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not to that point yet from my understanding. I, I will do some more research on that. And also, I didn't know that you could use capacitor-capacitor or inductor-inductor matching networks to match circuits. You can see it has a more limited range of, impedance, of impedances that it will match, but 
that configuration will work as well for some applications. Okay, so one of the things that Alan steered me to in this video was a program written by Ward AE6TY called SimSmith. And this is a Smith chart program which greatly simplifies using a Smith chart over what you might print out or use in a book. And the reason that this is so much simpler is because this one is normalized to a 50 ohm system. Let me move this cursor. This horizontal line represents resistance and it goes from zero to infinity ohms with 50 ohms being in the middle. If you print out a Smith chart or get one from a book or some other reference, it will not say 50 here. It'll probably say either zero or one. This will be a reference only and it could be used for a 50 ohm system or a 75 ohm video system or something else altogether. But as hands we use 50 ohms so we have 50 ohms right here and what this does is it prevents us from having to normalize a different type of Smith chart, a universal Smith chart to use for our 50 ohm applications. So we get to omit a step. Okay up here we have our generator and our load. So we're kind of reading from right to left as we apply power to an antenna. This is the transmitter. This is the antenna. And in my case this is the mismatched antenna. So I want to put in between these two inductance and capacitance that will allow me to have a 50 ohm system. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tell this what frequency I'm interested in. 14.03 which is about the middle of the CW frequency and I want the, um, the antenna to appear as 50 ohms. So I put 50 in here and right here I need to put the values that I obtained from the network analyzer. So on 20 meters, I got 18.8 and minus J3.6. And that plots right over here. And I can see that my SWR with that plot would be 2.6. I don't remember what the vector network analyzer gave me for that, but probably that value. So I'm here, I need to be here in order to be resonant and have a low SWR. So how do I get from one place to another? Here are, here is where I plotted and here is where I need to be for that antenna to appear resonant and with a low SWR at 14.03 megahertz. If I go between the transmitter and the antenna and add inductance and capacitance, this value will change in an arc. I can't move straight to here as I add and increase and decrease those values. They move only in arcs. So I can move upward or downward. I'll move upward if I add inductance. I'll move downward if I add capacitance. And I can move either <clears throat> counterclockwise down or clockwise and down. All those depend on if the inductance and capacitance is in series and in shunt. So let me first, just to show you how this works, I'm going to add shunt capacitance. So I grab this capacitor here, drag it up to between my transmitter and the antenna, and then I've got a value that just appeared here. I can click on that, turn my mouse, and change that value. And you can see that no matter what I do, that's not moving me anywhere closer to where I need to be in the center of this plot. So let me take that out. Put it down here in the trash can. Let me try parallel capacitance. Okay, we may be getting somewhere now, and we are. And right here is about where I want to be. Why here? Because remember, I can only move in arcs. So I've moved in one arc down to this line, this blue line. And now I can add inductance to move up to here. So let me add series inductance here and change the value by clicking on that and moving my cursor, my mouse wheel, and bingo. Look what happens to the predicted SWR as I move this around. As I get closer and closer to the center, my SWR my SWR becomes closer to where I want it to be. 
So, with one inductor of 438 nanohenries and one capacitor of 555 picofarads, I can now feed my antenna and have almost a perfect SWR. All right, let me show you another little trick. Let's say that you've got a value over here, and this value is, let's just type one in here. All right, let's say an antenna plotted here, and you don't know what component to put first, which one to put next, whether to put this one in shunt or in series or the other one in series or what. You don't know what to do. So come down here and grab the, the network and you'll notice in the fields below it that the very first one is auto in the mode. The mode is auto. I can change that after I put this into place. I can change it to manual, but it will come up in auto. I put it in between here, let go of the mouse, and it automatically gives me both the capacitance and the inductance that I need to match that antenna with those values. And let's say that I can't find a capacitor of 216 picofarads. Just can't find it. Can't make one with other capacitors. Then I can go to manual by clicking on auto. That puts me in the manual mode. Now I can come down here and click the capacitor value. <clears throat> Losing my voice. And I can scroll around and see how far away I can get while looking at my SWR. Let's say I'm happy with a 1.5 to 1. How low can I go in capacitor value and still have 1.5 to 1? I can go down to 300 picofarads or I can go as far away as about 130 125 in the other direction and still be within 1.5 to 1. So that's kind of a handy way of doing it. So I just made this value up. Um, but anyway, if you have a mismatched antenna, it will plot somewhere around here or here or here or here. And if you drag this one up, put it in auto mode, it will automatically give you the values that you need. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, the next step after this will be to order this capacitor if I don't have it in my junk box or I can't make it by paralleling or, or putting other caps together. Um, I'll get something close to that. And I've got several cores, T50-2 and maybe a T68-2. You can look up those cores and their compositions and it will tell you how many windings makes a given amount of inductance. So if I need 80 nanohenries like I do here, maybe it will tell me to wind um, 18 turns or whatever it turns out to be. And then I'll put these together. The capacitor will be first in line after the transmitter and it will be in parallel. After that will be the inductor. And then both of those will hook to the antenna right here and here. And I should have an SWR of almost perfect. Anyway, thanks again. Um, to Alan W2AEW and to Ward AE6TY for making these programs and for educating us on how to use them. They're very beneficial and uh, a lot of fun to use. 73, thanks for watching.